What's up, everybody? Time for another video. Grab a piece of paper and a pencil. Let's get started. So today's notes are on what is groundwater. So let's get into it, guys. So if we look at the image, the first thing you want to write down in your notes is the definition of groundwater. It is the water that soaks into the ground and collects in these pores. Pores are just empty spaces. And if we look at the image, we can see we have some gravel. We also have a rock, both of which have pores. And the water is filling those pores, meaning that that rock and that gravel is permeable. We're going to get to these words permeable and impermeable in just a second. Let's move on to the next slide. Let's talk about porosity. So when I say pores, I'm just meaning empty space. And porosity is just the space between sediment grains. If you have a high porosity, that means the water is going to be able to fill that rock or fill that soil very easily. If you have a low porosity, then you have few pores and it's going to be more difficult for that rock or that soil to fill with water. If we look down at this image, we see different sand grains, and in between those sand grains is the pore space. So I'd say that this rock or this soil has a pretty good porosity. Permeability, that's the other word you need to know. Porosity means empty spaces. Permeability means can I flow through? So if something is permeable, then water can flow through. If you have a high permeability, water will find it very easy to flow through. And if you have a low permeability, water will find it difficult to flow through. And if you're impermeable, that means water's not flowing through you at all. So if we look at the image, we have poor permeability at the top. The cement is blocking the pores, so the pores are not connected. The water cannot flow through. And down at the bottom, we have good permeability. The pores are connected. Water finds it easily to flow through. And if this was soil, the water would continue to flow all the way down to the bottom until it hits a layer that is impermeable. If you are impermeable, water cannot go through you. Here's an easy way to remember if something's permeable. Think of it like a maze. Can you find the way through this maze? Start at the bottom left. See if you can find your way out. Go ahead. I'll give you three seconds. Or if you need to, pause the video. Three, two, one. All right. Let's see if you got it. So yes, you can flow through this maze. This maze would be permeable. If there was no way to exit the maze, then that would be impermeable. All right, so let's write a couple things down in our notes. First, we know that groundwater keeps going deeper into the Earth's crust until it reaches a layer of impermeable rock. So make sure you wrote down impermeable, water cannot go through. At this point, the water stops moving down, water begins filling up the pores and the rocks above, and the layers of permeable rock that lets water move freely is known as an aquifer. Go ahead and write that word down, aquifer, because now we're going to look at one. There it is. Okay, so if you look at the image first, don't read the words, look at the image. The water down below the Earth's surface, that is known as an aquifer. And sure enough, humans have come along and they've installed a well. So if we look, many people get their water through wells that have been drilled into the zone of saturation. That's something else we're about to add into our notes. The zone of saturation. When you drill a well, you wanna make sure that your well goes deep enough so that you can actually get up all that delicious water. Get up all that, get up all that, get up all that delicious water. So let's take a quick look at this image before we move on. We see that the bedrock at the very bottom, that is our impermeable layer. The water cannot go through the bedrock. And so the water fills up and we have an aquifer. Humans have installed a well and they've dug deep enough into the saturated zone so that they can actually get that water out of the soil. And the unsaturated zone up top we're gonna call that the zone of aeration. All right, let's write down some of this stuff. First things first, let's start at the top. Zone of aeration. The first layers of soil that is permeable has air in it. The second thing I want you to write down, zone of saturation. The area where all of the rocks are filled or saturated with water. When you think of something that's saturated, think of like a wet sponge. It's just full of water and you can squeeze all that water out. And the last thing I need you to write down, water table. The top of the water in the zone of saturation. So if you go to the very top of that underground water layer, that is known as the water table. Imagine if it rains a lot, then the water table is going to go up. 
But if it doesn't rain for several days and everybody's using up that underground water, water table's gonna go down. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so here we have a farm. So if you look at the top, everything looks fine. The farmer has three wells and all three of these wells are dug deep enough that they're in the zone of saturation. However, look at the very bottom. This could be months later after the farmer has used up some of that water to plant some of his crops, he had to use a lot of water. So he's caused heavy pumping and has created a cone of depression. Now, if you look at the well beside his house, it's gone dry. He's gonna need to wait for the rain to fill up that water table so that he can get more water. Or maybe he shouldn't have pumped so much water so quickly. Either way, that's an issue with wells. Let's go ahead and write that down. Problems with well use. The supply of groundwater is limited. During a drought, the water table drops, which is why you should conserve water. And pumping out too much water, the wells will go dry. Too bad that farmer didn't know about this stuff. Make sure you write it down in your notes. Any of y'all planning on becoming a farmer? Just asking. All right, let's move on to what type of wells there are. You got two type of wells. You have non-artesian wells and artesian wells. An artesian well, the water pumps out all on its own. On the left, the water must be removed by hand or machine, but artesian wells are actually pretty cool. The way that they work is the water is trapped in between two impermeable layers. Now these impermeable layers kind of act like a vice and they're squeezing the water out. If we look at the image, the well at the top is a non-artesian well. So the water is not shooting out on its own. Down at the bottom though, we have an artesian well. Now this well, you don't have to do anything. The force from all of this water, the pressure from all of this water is causing that artesian well to erupt all on its own. All right, guys, that's it. Wow, I know, that was a short one. Well, really, all you need to know is the layers. So I want you guys to look at this image and memorize these layers. So starting at the bottom, if we look at number three, that's gonna be the body of water. Maybe it's a lake, maybe it's an ocean, maybe we're next to a river. We know that that's where all the water's at. If we look at number two, that looks like we're getting a little bit of precipitation. So we're getting some rain. Number one would be Earth's surface. Number five. Number five is actually referring to the water table. Remember, the water is underground. And if it rains, the water table goes up. If we have a drought, the water table goes down. Number four, that would be the zone of aeration. There's nothing but air. If I drill a well and I stop here, I'm not going to be too happy. And then last but not least, number six, we're looking at the zone of saturation. That's where you need to drill your well. All right, guys, that's the end for groundwater notes. I know that was quick, but most of you guys have already completed the work. So I figured I didn't want to bore you with these notes. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.